Hi, this is Dr. Richard Ruling here to welcome you on the Total Health Channel. Please uh, like and share this if you uh, think it merits it. I believe what you're going to hear is uh, better than what you hear at church or Sunday school, Sabbath school, whatever. Uh, this is for, by the way, this is non-denominational for all Christians. Uh, I'm coming from a Seventh-day Adventist background, but I'm not trying to get anybody to join this church. I believe time is so short that if you will just, uh, if you're a Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, go to your Sunday school, start sharing, be a light to that group. Uh, you can help them more later than if you join an Adventist church where they think you don't know anything for a year or two. Uh, so see, see what uh, is coming because I think end times are impending and uh, uh, that's the implied nature of the day of the Lord. Sadly, most Christians think it's the day he comes in the, uh, in the sky. Uh, but the book of Joel has more references to the day of the Lord than any other book. And it, uh, I, it, it, all three chapters have references to day of the Lord, but there's no second coming that I can see uh, anywhere uh, in it. So <laughs> consider that it's the beginning of the end times, like uh, we find in Isaiah 2, verse 12. By the way, 2.12 is boiling point. <laughs> but in that same chapter, twice, in verses 19 and 21, it says that uh, God will shake terribly the earth in King James, or in the New King James, shake the earth mightily. Okay, and in Joel 2, 10 and 11, there's an earthquake, and uh, verse 11 says it's the day of the Lord. And uh, Paul, in the New Testament, tells us that the uh, day of the Lord comes uh, as a thief in the night, uh, as travail, with sudden destruction, okay, earthquake, sudden destruction, as travail on a woman with child. And that last reference uh, is a reminder of Egypt's experience. In Exodus 4.22, God called each, uh, Israel my firstborn. And it, Egypt didn't want to give them up. It was birth pangs, trouble, ten plagues. Um, so uh, we're in for uh, uh, you know a, a series of uh, interesting uh, stuff. I think um, God uh, gave a history in Genesis. It says he... In Isaiah 46.10 declares the end from the beginning. And in the book of beginnings, uh, uh, Joseph went into Egypt and there were seven good years before seven bad years. And I think we're, <laughs> we're winding up the good years and, uh, you know, with uh, the economy's been good, etc. But uh, since 2015, a bunch of signs happened, uh, which, by the way, uh, uh, in the start of 2015, uh, a rare solar eclipse on the equinox, followed by a blood moon on Passover. And Joel 2.31 says, The sun will be darkened, moon turned to blood before the day of the Lord. Well, the word for before, pani, means facing, facing the day of the Lord. And uh, also, uh, the text we already quoted partly, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 2, and 3, the day of the Lord comes as a thief when they're saying peace and safety sudden destruction and the peace and safety was the Iran nuclear deal also in 2015 I think and uh, you know the economy was so bad uh, that, that uh, um, nobody Obama thought it could never be turned around but Trump Trump did amazing things and we've had good economy uh, lasting till now but trouble seems on its way and the Pope is talking about a reset uh, wanting to to help the economy with his plan, which is destined, in my opinion, to be very poor. Uh, he wants to take the uh, personal private property in, in return for forgiveness of all debt, etc. Well, uh, you know, I, I like my money, my cash. Uh, they want digital, and then they can just turn your number off just any old time. You will need a little vaccination in the arm uh, and uh, scheduled, etc. Follow-ups uh, in order to travel bad situation, total loss of liberty and freedom in this country. Thank you, Pope. Uh, not much. But um, anyway, getting back to the day of the Lord and these different texts, uh, it's not found in the book of Revelation. It's, uh, I think it's uh, implied by the wording when John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Lord's day, day of the Lord, he was shown what it would be and he was told to write it. So the end time uh, period is day of the Lord and it's shown in the book of Revelation. Um, but getting back to uh, travail on a woman with child, there are about five reasons why uh, Egypt is like America or America is like Egypt. Okay, uh, Israelites, Israel went into Egypt in a time of famine. 
and uh, pioneers came to America in a time of famine for the Word of God. The papacy had proscribed and prohibited the Bible. People hid it, or parts of, parts of the Bible, in, in their, they would sew it into their garment, uh, pull it out to share with people uh, uh, who were open and interested. Uh, but they fled to this country for their lives. Uh, it, it, they would risk uh, death at high sea or in a new land with Indians and starvation because uh, freedom was better to them than uh, the oppression of, of uh, the old world. We New world being better. Well, that's uh, time number one. And um, Egypt was a breadbasket at that time. Uh, America is the breadbasket today. Egypt was the greatest land uh, or nation at that time. America is the greatest now. Um, the um, Egypt initially liked what uh, Joseph had done and honored the Israelites, gave them the land of Goshen, which was good for agriculture. Uh, Americans did, and flour Israel flourished there. America flourished here in the new land, but things changed. And an adversarial relationship developed with Egypt that put uh, Israelites into bondage. Well, today we find that most Americans are in bondage in, in different ways, alcohol, tobacco, substances like uh, drugs, even uh, prescription drugs are a leading form of uh, illness and death, cause of illness and death. And uh, f um, so bottom line, not good. A fifth reason that we might consider Egypt like America is because Egypt killed Israelite babies and America has aborted 60 million. This Christian nation is worse than Egypt, okay, and is deserving more of judgments. God judged Egypt and he slew their firstborn. Uh, but as the days of Noah, I think something big is coming, big, okay? And uh, so just consider that as a, a rightful payback and fair. It would be really unfair for God to pass us by, um, in, in my opinion. Billy Graham said, if God has, waits much longer, you have to apologize to Sodom. I think apologize to Egypt as well. So anyway, uh, we are pegged for, for judgment to come. And um, uh, in that context pioneers gave a message of judgment in 1844. Uh, it was a Baptist preacher who uh, proclaimed the end of the world and uh, the, the bridegroom was coming. Uh, that was a, a part of the message. Uh, uh, they also gave a message that Bab Babylon has fallen in 1844. Those three messages will fit what's hap going to happen to America in the near future, really. And uh, the heads up sign for it um, comes out of the book of Daniel. Christ, when he was asked about the end of the world, said to study the book of Daniel, understand it. And in Daniel, we find a vision that Gabriel said was at the time of the end. Sadly, <laughs> the pioneers missed it, and this this point is uh, not seen by Seventh-day Adventists even to this date, really. But the uh, point is that the vision, there are two visions in Daniel 8, and they thought that the vision of uh, 2300 evening mornings was the time of the end till 1844. That was year for day principle. But uh, concordances, uh, Young's, Strong's, Englishman's, Bible works, they all show that the vision at the time of the end is the kazone, the conflict of the ram and goat. And uh, it says in the text in verse 20 that the horns on the ram are the kings of Media and Persia. And um, those, they were conquered by Alexander the Great in 331 BC, but God gave us that history lesson so we could trust his Bible, okay? And uh, Ecclesiastes 3.15 in the New English Bible says that what is has been already, what is to come has been already. God summons each event back in its turn. That's the basis for history repeating, really. History is his story, okay? <laughs> and we can get it uh, if, we, if we believe the Bible and, and watch for it. History does not repeat exactly, but it rhymes. Similar reasons, similar situations, uh, if we can watch for them. And we've just given you five parallels of America with Egypt. So we should uh, be prepared for uh, an impending event. The, the Medes and Persians today are Iraq and Iran. And it's, this has already started for us. This is not rocket science at this point. It's just a matter of time. And... Um, Christ said, when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, in Luke 21, verse 20, I think that phrase is, uh, Christ was familiar with the scripture, and Zechariah 14, uh, it says, the day of the Lord is coming, 
And all nations, actually I think it's all Muslim nations, all neighboring nations that surrounded Jerusalem, will compass Jerusalem with armies and the city will be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravished, half the city goes into captivity, and then the Lord will go forth to fight against them. Well, I think he'll use the ram and the goat scenario. You know, he's going to clobber that ram. Uh, that ram, representing Muslim, militant Islam, uh, has got a few things to learn. Uh, they have uh, their Dome of the uh, Rock mosque, and on it is inscribed in Arabic uh, that, uh, referring to Allah, their God, uh, hath no son uh, that he is uh, bound to accept. Or, you know, he, in other words, Allah has no son. Okay. Well, I think, uh, surprise, I think they have, uh, by the way, this, this, they're doing so, I believe, will happen in the spring. That's when Titus uh, came to Jerusalem, uh, when lots of Jews were in the city for Passover. And uh, it says in, I think it's 2 Samuel 11, 2, that uh, the time of the year when kings go forth to battle, uh, speaking uh, at the beginning of the year or the end, the end of the previous year. That's when kings go forth to battle. And so uh, I think it's got, end times are going to click in with biblical timings. Uh, and we will see that happen. And uh, short-lived happy joy for the Muslims because it says uh, in Joel 3.16, the Lord will roar from Jerusalem, the heavens and earth will shake. They will be at the epicenter of a huge earthquake that shakes the whole world. And they'll get out of there. It says in Zechariah 14, verse 5, they'll flee as they fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah. When uh, Isaiah was called to be a prophet amid an earthquake, if you recall, the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. I think that because the, the censer tipped over in the temple. So uh, basically that was uh, um, earthquake at that time. So having said that, I believe um, we can see a basis for what Christ said to John in Revelation 10, 10, 11. He tells the story of uh, John being asked to eat a, a little book, Book of Daniel, and he got, it was sweet in his mouth. This was the pioneers in 1844, message of Christ's coming, sweet, but bitter in their belly when they had a great disappointment. If you were to Google great disappointment, you would find that it applies to William Miller and the, his followers in 1844. But um, the chapter ends in the next verse 11, which says you must, pro you must prophesy again. And then the following uh, verse is about judgment that begins. Rise, measure the temple, they that worship therein. God is going to give power to his two witnesses, olive trees, representing Old and New Testament, lived in our lives for 1260 days. It says that they have the power to shut the heavens and turn water to blood in verse 6. Well, that's uh, Moses and Elijah power. Moses turned water to blood. And I think we do the same in, in Revelation uh, 8, verse 7 and 8. 7, seven is the, all the heavens burned up, uh, grass burns up. Well, that's like Elijah. The next verse is water turns to blood. See, a third of the sea becomes blood. So uh, we, we will be bringing judgments and blame like Elijah and Moses was for bad times. And uh, it's going to be trouble. But uh, live for God, and I believe there's high reward for it. Yeah, uh, if we can take it, and I, I, I want to, you know, suggest that it's better to take it and do uh, be on God's side than anything else. The end times is to prove who will be on God's side and who is not. And lots of people uh, think that they can take a gun and uh, do what they want, but uh, they're going from the frying pan to the fire if they don't know God's plan. And we'll be talking about it more very soon uh, this Saturday afternoon, uh, a, a, a online uh, webinar. Please uh, um, sign up for my uh, situation. I, I, first of all, I wanted to, uh, I'll be sending a link out, uh, or I'll put it in the link below this video. Let's, let's do it that way, where you can sign up and get uh, and uh, be notified automatically of with these webinars and uh, when they are, because uh, there's a lot to share. This is just part one of uh, uh, numerous parts, but on Saturday will be uh, about the bridegroom's coming and how we can be the bride of Christ. And uh, um, it's high reward. He said he will make us ruler over all that he has in Luke's wedding parable. But it's if we are so doing. So doing what? Well, we're not seeing it. I can promise you we're, we're clueless. 
I've lived, a, you know, uh, I've been in church for over 60 years. I'm 79 now, and I've never heard a sermon on that uh, parable. You know, why not? Uh, you know, well, it only mentions uh, wedding once, and it only mentions a uh, parable once. Peter asked, is this parable for us or everyone? Christ said, it's for the servant that is so doing when he comes. And it's not when he comes in the sky. It's when he's coming as a thief. God came to Egypt as a thief. He executed judgment and he took Israel as a thief from Egypt. Egypt felt stolen. <laughs> Their slaves were robbed you know, from them. But uh, uh, he made a covenant with them and the covenant made them his kingdom. It says in Daniel 2.44, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Well, a lot of people think that's the second coming again. But uh, in the think about it, um, the second coming is not in the days of these kings. There are seven plagues that fall in Revelation 16. Babylon falls in Revelation 17 and 18. Kingdoms, uh, th there's no more kings, okay, when Christ comes in the sky in the following chapter. There's not, nothing standing. Only honest people who want him to come. And that won't be coming as a thief, by the way, when he comes in the sky. Every eye will see him, okay? This is not a coming as a thief. But when God came to Egypt, he was invisible. He was a thief, it seemed like, you know, okay? What happened, They, uh, you know, with their firstborn dying? So maybe you get it, I hope. Uh, and let's study. Time to study and get ready. As Abraham Lincoln said, uh, my day, if I study and get ready, my, my chance will come someday. I think ours is coming soon. And we need to uh, be ready. Uh, go to my website. Uh, this is called, um, oops, got it upside down. Thank you. Um, health, happiness, and destiny. Just three words. Everybody wants those words. Health, happiness, destiny. Dot com. And uh, on it, uh, you click the, the DVD book donation page. You can see the eight minutes of this DVD. It shows how to reverse most diseases. Uh, for example, heart disease. U.S. News and World Report. Uh, I'm a cardiologist, uh, took cardiology training, taught at School of Health in Loma Linda University. My university was featured in this cover story of uh, National Geographic, Secrets of Living Longer. I'm, I'm planning to do that myself. In fact, I don't think I'm going to die because I think I'm going to live till Christ comes. And, uh, um, but we can do this with seven simple health habits if we are tuned into it. And so uh, I've written a book called uh, Health, Happiness, and Destiny, which is the website name too. And you can get it uh, for a little donation. Uh, if you were to go on uh, Amazon, uh, you would find that it has eight five-star reviews. Nothing else. Uh, in other words, everybody that liked it gave it five stars, eight of them. And uh, as a bonus, you get this little book, uh, What's Behind the New World Order, which is uh, really what's going to do it to us. The New World Order is the, the third beast in Revelation 17. It is the image beast, image of the papacy, first beast. I mean, early Americans thought the first beast, sea beast, was the papacy. It came from the sea because it says in Revelation 17, verse 15, that the waters you saw are peoples, nations, tongues, and people, uh, you know, population groups. Old world, dense population, uh, was the sea beast. And um, then comes the land beast. America grew out of the wilderness, uh, you know, so it was just the opposite of dense population of Europe. But it makes an image uh, to the first beast, an image of the beast. Uh, it do actually it doesn't say of or to in the Greek. It just says image beast. And the um, UN, New World Order, is the image of the papacy because of so many Catholic countries. So uh, you, you need to know what's behind it and what's coming according to Bible prophecy in Revelation 13 and be ready for it uh, because uh, the most solemn uh, message in all the Bible is uh, don't go along with that system. You know, it's going to be bad. And uh, God is going to make a full end of this country, uh, Jeremiah 30, verse 10 or 11. And uh, we, can, we don't have to, I'd say, get in the country right now uh, bad times are coming. Cities are going to be the focus of uh, martial law, and uh, if we, it, it's each year is getting worse. It's, uh, the passage favorite author says the passage from place to place will soon be hedged in with difficulties and dangers, and so uh, I'd say uh, get out now. Get out. Uh, I don't mean in the winter necessarily. Christ said, "Pray that your flight be not in the winter or on the Sabbath day." Well. Sabbath day or Sabbath year. A sabbatical year is 2022. So do it this next year. Get out 
before 2022, a sabbatical year. Huge reasons why. Um, we said that America is like Egypt. Egypt killed the babies. And uh, <clears throat> Roe v. Wade enabled that to happen in 1973. Uh, when God executed judgment on Egypt, it was a jubilee event. He gave them freedom, and they got they went to the promised land. Well, uh, 50 years, jubilee event again from Roe v. Wade is 2023. That's just two, and a, two years from now as it's coming, and springtime will be huge for 2023, I think. So let's wait and see. Get ready, study, and uh, thank you. Please share, like, and do what you can. Uh, visit the... Uh, website that I mentioned. Forgot where I put the little, uh, yeah, here it is. Again, visit Health, Happiness, and Destiny and uh, uh, get some of the materials to study and read. Uh, you know, you get out of something what you put into it. And if, you, if you'd rather put uh, the $10 into a pizza for your belly, um, you know, I'm not sure it's so good. You know, we, we spend millions of dollars. Actually, uh, uh, Google will search you, uh, average American spends more than a million a year. I mean, not a year, in a lifetime, okay? And uh, a few thousand every year on this, that, and the other. Why not uh, a little donation and study and read? It's time to get ready. Uh, there's a lot we don't know. Christ said we should live by every word that comes from the mouth of God, and that's uh, more than most people here in church in a year. Uh, you know, they all hear, Jesus is going to save you, Jesus is going to save you, but they're not hearing or studying or reading how it's going to happen. And I think uh, we need a better idea. The uh, messenger to the Laodicean church is said to be blind and naked. Blind, don't see what's coming. Naked, loins are not girded with truth. Um, bad situation. Time to wake up and not necessarily uh, agree with uh, just uh, what you hear every week uh, in a smooth sermon. Thank you, and uh, we'll see you again. Please uh, like and share.